Human knowledge and scholarship were handed over from generation to generation, first through oral communication and later through written records. Before invention of paper, clay tablets, palm leaves, leather, wooden logs, stones, etc. were used as writing material. Places of worship such as temples and churches were used to store these works of knowledge. Libraries soon became a necessity to the requirements of storage, preservation, organization and proper use of growing scholarly material. The history of libraries can be traced back to the great libraries of Alexandria in the 3rd century. The use of information technology has since transformed the role, scope and services rendered in today's libraries. The application of computers in libraries began in the 1970s for automating various in-house operations such as acquisition, cataloging, circulation, serial control and other management functions. Computerized operations made existing manual systems more effective and efficient. In developed countries like the USA and UK, system of shared copy cataloging commenced during this period. With the introduction of PCs, personal computers, the power of computing reached across all institutions and their libraries. The library started replacing their card catalogues with online public access catalog, OPAC, and even smaller libraries started automating their in-house operations. With availability of online catalogue on the campus network, a user could search the library's holding at any time from a remote location without having to come to the library. However, the OPAC, like card catalogue, only provided an indicator to the availability of books or other documents in the library and its location on the shelves. A user could not actually view the works on his or her computer screen. However, the library OPACs are confined to show holdings of books and monographs in libraries. They neither catalogue chapters of books nor individual articles in journals that are most important to the scientific and research community. Abstracting and indexing services such as Compendex and Medline index and abstract research articles that appear in journals. The library acquires such services to supplement their library catalogues. These indexing and abstracting services were available till the early 1970s only as printed indices. However, by the middle of the 1970s, these services were also made available through commercial online search services like Dialog or BRS. With the advent of CD-ROM technology, these database services started appearing on CD-ROMs at an affordable cost. In India, NISCARE, the National Institute of Science, Communication and Information Resources under CSIR, did a commendable job in establishing an electronic library division in order to provide information in the areas of science and technology. All these information resources are available in electronic format such as CD-ROMs, etc., which provide unlimited access to the scientific community. The CD-ROM databases are available in various disciplines as well and they can be divided as primary literature, for example, journals. Uh, many publishers are bringing out uh, CD databases consisting of journals. Now, these databases may be only about abstracts or there may be also full text databases. So, uh, similarly, there are uh, databases for secondary literature that is abstracting indexing services and so on. So, these are available for various disciplines. For example, in library information science, we have LISA plus, 
we have Ulrich, we have Global Books and Print, etc. And for various other disciplines also, there are uh, databases. For example, in agriculture, we have CAB abstract, and chemistry, we have chemical abstract, and so on. The Library Online Public Access Catalog or OPAC acts as a tool to direct library users to the documents available in the library. Similarly, indexing and abstracting services either in print form or on CD-ROM also act as directional service that provide an abstract of a research article that appeared in a journal. A user of such services does not get full text access to the research articles. For getting a full length paper, a user has to depend on his or her library if it is available in the library or on other libraries through interlibrary loan or else on document delivery services. The availability of OPAC and online bibliographic databases made the library material more accessible. They also created a tremendous demand on libraries to go beyond the online bibliographic services to the actual delivery of contents online. Once the library user had begun to enjoy the freedom of remote 24 hours a day access, they quickly grew frustrated with searches that ended with the identification of printed material that they had to fetch from their library or from other libraries. By the late 1980s and early 1990s, the cost of storage and bitmap display technology had come down considerably. The networks were much faster than before. It was possible to deliver content either as page images or as formatted or unformatted text. While the need for digital libraries was being felt for years, the actual growth development and surge of activities in a digital library can generally be attributed to the availability of technology that include 1. Emergence of internet and web technologies as a media of information, delivery and access. The web being a hypermedia based system allows linking amongst electronic resources. 2. Availability of highly evolved extraordinarily simple and intuitive user interface that is Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator for all prevalent platforms. And the last, advances in online storage technologies enabling storage of large amounts of content at an increasingly affordable cost. When you take libraries, it is basically the collection of objects in the form of information and we store them in a fashion which can be retrieved. Now, in a traditional library, what happens that you have the store of information as objects like books, and then you have a separate access mechanism by which access the information contained in the books. Now, over the year, the books have been not replaced, but many more other kinds of documents have been added, for example, microfilm or microfilms, where do you call it as a microfilm library. Maybe audio, audio you call it audio library, maybe video you call it video library, maybe manuscript you call it manuscript library. But in this, the technology which works there is most important. For example, when you talk of books, it is paper and print that works. When you talk of film library, it is the film, the projection, the camera, all this technology comes. So basically, when we take the difference between all these kinds of libraries, there are two aspects. One is the technology of storage of all these materials or the information and the technology of access. Now, if you take the technology of storage of all these materials, then conceptually you do not find any difference this between these varieties of libraries called digital library, electronic library or the conventional libraries. Now, if you take the technology of access, actually the difference lies there. Let us now sum up the major differences between a digital library and a traditional library. First, a traditional library focuses on physical objects. Even the purpose of library OPAC is to point you to the physical location of books. Two, physical objects can exist only at one place at a time. Either you reach them or they are delivered to you. Three, 
The digital library removes the physical barrier and facilitates multiple access and electronic transmission of digital objects. 4. Digital libraries come with complication such as intellectual property, licensing terms and conditions. 5. Traditional libraries offer additional social and educational benefits. And finally, 6. Most traditional libraries offer hybrid services, that is, access to digital collections. Some libraries also take up the task of content creation. Let us now define a digital library. Digital libraries are organized collections of digital information. The digital libraries facilitate seamless access and search to a large and organized repository of information and knowledge. A digital library is not just one entity but multiple sources seamlessly integrated. Digital information can be accessed rapidly around the world and searched very quickly. Let's now talk about the evolution of a digital library. In India, digital libraries have evolved along the technology ladder for the past 30 years. The 1970s witnessed remote access and online search and retrieval services, including mini and mainframe systems. The 1980s saw a revolution in bibliographic and full-text databases made deliverable on CD-ROMs and now on DVD-ROMs. Adonis, IEL, UMI's VPO, GPO, ABI, Inform, Espace World, Derwent Patents, etc. In 1989, there were more than 1,700 full-text sources available on 16 online systems, although as simple ASCII files without graphics and pictures. The 1990s saw the beginning of the Internet Revolution. Some of the enabling technologies responsible for bringing forth digital libraries were client-server technology, World Wide Web, high-performance computers, high-storage devices, Internet browsers as well-developed, ever-evolving client-end applications, HTML, DHTML and XML, interoperable standards, authentication, object-oriented databases and servlet applets. Digital libraries are repository of, of digital objects that are organized in a fashion so that they can be searched and browsed and they facilitate browsing and search interfaces. Five major components of digital libraries are collection infrastructure, network infrastructure, access infrastructure, organization of digital collections and manpower. As far as collection infrastructure is concerned, collections can be bought they can be bought on CDs, they can be bought in magnetic media, they can be accessed. They can be accessed through other digital libraries, uh, they can be accessed as an individual library or they can also be accessed as a consortium of uh, institutions or libraries. Indest is one of the examples, there are several other uh, consortium in India. Digital collections may be accessed from existing digital libraries offered by commercial publishers and other universities. A few examples of digital libraries offered by commercial publishers are Elsevier Sciences Science Direct, Springer Verlag's Link, ACM Digital Library and IEE Electronic Library Online are some electronic libraries offered by the non-profit making professional societies. Similarly, networked digital library of theses and dissertations are digital libraries that are created by educational institutions and are available in public domain. Now, in the digital library, it is possible to access all the repositories which is spread throughout the world in many forms. Not only that, by taking one single example of access, what you can do the digital library can take you from one database to another database automatically, 
which in the case of conventional library or the electronic library as we told you before, you cannot do that. That means you get an access mechanism and search one particular CD-ROM, but digital libraries gives you the opportunity of searching the database, more than one dis databases at a time. The libraries can also create their own digital collections. The libraries can either convert existing computer processable files into HTML, XML or PDF, or they can scan printed documents using scanners. In this context, NISCARE has taken up an ambitious project known as TKDL, or Traditional Knowledge Digital Library, to convert information resources in the field of Yunani, Ayurveda, Siddha and Yoga into digital format. They have digitalized entire collections on the subject, which can be accessed on their website in different languages. We are trying to create a storehouse of all Indian publishers who will provide their publications to NSDL, which via internet shall be made available to the remotest corner of this country in school and colleges. And thus, creating a level playing field in the remotest possible area and providing them similar level of facilities at affordable cost as are being available in metros. We now talk about access infrastructure. Web-based search and browse interfaces are access infrastructure for a digital library. A user can browse contents of a digital library to its content pages. He or she may select items of his or her interest by clicking at the appropriate link to get to the further details or to the full text of relevant portion. Similarly, a user can also conduct a search using search interfaces that facilitate searches by keywords, names of authors, title, etc. One could use the full name or part of the name or use a single keyword or multiple keywords using boolean operators such as AND, OR, NOT for combining terms. Uh, the access infrastructure is another important component of digital library that allows you to browse and search digital objects. There are interfaces that allow you to narrow your search down or to expand your searches. It all depends on what kind of treatment you have given to your objects. Treatment in the sense of depth logging done, depth of metadata that is assigned to the digital objects. And now, computing and network infrastructure. Most digital libraries are web-based implementation. They require computing and network infrastructure so that the users can reach them. Infrastructure is required within academic campus as well as outside so as to access the internet. and from there to digital resource organization. The documents in a traditional library are classified and catalogued so as to put them in organized order. Digital objects in a digital library are organized using web-enabled databases or digital library software. Greenstone Digital Library, Harvester CDSW are examples of some of the digital library softwares that are available in public domain. The digital objects are organized using databases. Uh, this is an example of Greenstone Digital Library Package, which is basically a public domain digital library package, uh, which we have used for, uh, for hosting scanned journals at IIT Delhi. Well, uh, these uh, digital objects, which consist of about 25,000 articles have been scanned and stored in Greenstone Digital Library. One can browse these articles. If you click at the article, you would see the contained pages and from contained pages, you can see the full text articles. It can handle variable formats. And the important thing is the, uh, the entire interface, the digital library, Greenstone Digital Library is free of cost and it can be used by anyone. Uh, since it's a public domain. Metadata is a new name used for describing cataloging of digital objects. Dublin Core is a standard used for describing digital objects just as MARC, MARC 21 and UNIMARC 
are standards used for cataloging physical documents in conventional libraries. Uh, the metadata can be structural metadata that allows you to navigate from one portion of document to other portion of document or from one document to other document. Uh, metadata could be administrative that uh, talks about uh, the formats used or uh, the standards used. The metadata could be descriptive that basically means subject description of uh, uh, digital contents that um, assigning keywords, assigning subject headings and things like that. Another important factor in a digital library is a digital object identifier, DOI. A digital object identifier is designed to provide a method by which digital objects can be reliably identified and accessed. The manpower is last and most, most important component of uh, digital libraries. Uh, you need a different kind of trained manpower to, to handle digital objects, uh, especially when it comes to format, when it comes to assigning keywords. You need different kind of trained manpower to handle digital objects. Making a digital library user friendly requires in-depth knowledge of digital document preparing, distributed database arrangements, hypertext and hypermedia, techniques of information storage and retrieval, IPR and licensing issues, electronic reference service, electronic document delivery. While computer scientists are responsible for the technical development of digital library, the librarians need to take charge of content organization, presentation, users training and retrieval of information from the digital libraries. The librarians and information professionals are therefore required to be trained in the current technological demands of digital libraries. With the advent of digital libraries, major Indian agencies have undertaken massive projects in creating such institutions. The Indian National Science Academy, INSA, under a project sponsored by the NISAT, have digitized all issues of its four journals. These journals can be accessed online from INSA's website. What we did is that we taken project to digitize entire INSA SNT publications and we have since completed the digitization of all the INSA scientific and technical journals which are available and which we will be seeing on the internet also and access them at www.insa.ac.in. We have tried to capture all the journals since its inception and the data is accessible using various metadata elements. The ultimate aim of this resource is to make it valuable and accessible globally so that everybody in the world can use and access them in a very global, efficient and effective way. This goes with the motto of INSA, which is that we promote Indian scientists and Indian scientific work. That is the ultimate aim of digitizing our entire contents. The same has been done for the Lok Sabha Library. The library offers full text of debates held on the floor of the parliament for the benefit of the general public and researchers. Moreover, biographical sketches of members of the parliament are also available. The Parliament of India, which is primarily a lawmaking body, ha having a large library of 1.2 million publications, have gone for digitization of its information in a big way. The concept or the project of digitization started way back in 1985 when we started indexing the information being generated within the parliament itself. This include the parliamentary debates, parliament questions, the discussions which takes place on the floor of the, floor of the house and various committee reports, the information about members of parliament and all other information which is being generated within the parliament. Now currently all this information is in properly indexed then converted into web format that means 
it is it becomes ready for releasing onto the internet and then the information is released on the internet on the uh, as early as possible the same has been done with the library at iit delhi the central library at the iit delhi has digitized more than 25000 pages from old volumes of journals in a project sponsored by the aicte the scanned pages can be hosted at the iit delhi intranet servers using greenstone digital library this is uh, an example of activity that was done in house and greenstone digital library is used to store these object that allows you to navigate to browse and to search the interfaces and finally to sum up digital libraries are amongst the most complex and advanced forms of information systems they present unique challenges and opportunities because of many diverse requirements involving collaborative support rapid access highly interactive interfaces digital document imaging distributed database management hypertext information retrieval enforcement of intellectual property rights integration of multimedia information services management of multilingual collections information mining electronic reference service electronic document delivery and selective dissemination of information due to these diverse requirements the digital libraries are emerging as growing interdisciplinary areas of research and education for information science computer science library science and a number of other related disciplines while computer scientists are responsible for the technical development of digital libraries the information scientists need to take charge of content organization presentation users training and retrieval of information from the digital libraries it can be reiterated that the technology and information resources on their own cannot make up an effective digital library the role of people as users and service providers would remain important